Hello and welcome to the first video in a series of tutorials on programming in the C language. This tutorial will cover the installation of the programs or applications that we need to actually compile and run C programs. The actual programming tutorials will start in the next video. At the end of this one there will be a tiny little program but if you've already got the tools installed then you can already start with the second video in this series. Otherwise, without further ado, I'll talk a little bit about what you need to actually develop in C. You only need two things. You need a text editor, simply one such as Notepad, to type out your C code text. And importantly, you need a compiler. A compiler is a program which takes the code you've written in an editor and converts this into machine instructions, which it packages then in an executable, which is your program, which you then run. And we'll be running our programs from a console window. So to find a compiler, there's a good one available, the GNU New Compiler, which is a suite of compilers, not just for C, but also for C++, Fortran, Objective-C, and many other languages. And if you go to mingw.org, mingw provided an installer package to install the compilers that we need for C and other languages. On the left hand side of the main homepage from MinGW is a navigation pane and inside there is a downloads link. If you click on the downloads link you'll be taken to the SourceForge website which hosts the executable. In the middle of the page you'll see looking for the latest version and click on the link here to download the latest installer. When you've downloaded that navigate to the directory where it's downloaded my case simply in downloads double click on the installer to run it say yes to user account control as always click next and next make sure the button here is checked for use prepackaged repository catalogs click next accept the license agreement otherwise it won't install leave the default directory as the c colon slash mingw click next leave the box tick for don't create a start menu folder because we don't need it and importantly here with components tick this box to select all components because although at the moment we only need the C compiler it's always good to install other compilers for other languages that you might want to be programming in in the future and why not do that now. Click next and then click on install to run the installer. And when you run the installer I've clicked cancel because I've already installed the compiler suite a black console window will open it'll start downloading various packages and installing the compiler suite. This will take a few minutes. Once this is, once this is done Navigate to your C drive and you should see in there a MinGW folder and if you double click inside there then you'll find a directory structure looking similar to this and a bin directory and inside the bin directory you'll see gcc.exe which is the C compiler. That's the program that takes the code we're going to write and converts it into a .exe, so an executable program file. Now the only fly in the ointment with all of this is when we're compiling in the console we type GCC to run this program. But that to be able to do that we need to add this path, this directory path of C mingw bin to the path variable for the Windows system. And to do that we need to right click on the address here, copy the address as text, right click on computer and go to properties and this opens up the system window. On the left hand side is advanced system settings if you click on that this opens up system properties and down the bottom of system properties is environment variables open up that and you get a window with user variables for screencast and system variables. In system variables if you click the down arrow here you should find path click on edit and be a little bit careful here because it's all highlighted in blue so if you press a key now the whole thing will be deleted and disappear if you do that then press cancel and then go to edit again otherwise click inside the blue to take it away and then hold down the right arrow on the keyboard until your cursor has scrolled to the end of the text line and then type after the last entry that's in there a semicolon as here and then hit Control and V to paste in the C min GW address like this. So you should have this line including the semicolon, this bit of text added onto your path variable. When you've done this click OK, click OK in environment variables, OK in system properties and close this system window here 
And now you've added that path to you, add the path to the compiler to your path variable, so you can type GCC in the console to use it. The problem is with Windows, you need to restart the computer to load this variable, so Windows is able to use it. So if you had to add this to your path, unfortunately, you need to restart Windows now and then carry on the video from where you've left off. Okay, assuming that everything's okay with the path variable, you need now to check that everything's working as anticipated. So go down to the start button on the bottom left, assuming your start menu is at the bottom of your screen, click the start button, type CMD and hit enter. And this will open up a console window as here and type GCC space dash or minus V. And this is simply running the compiler GCC with the option dash V, which means show version. And when you hit enter, it should send up a load of text like this. And at the bottom of the text, you'll have something GCC dash version and a set of numbers, in my case, 4.6.2. But if you don't have this, it means the compiler, for whatever reason, hasn't it either hasn't installed correctly or your path variable hasn't been altered correctly. You need to go back and check everything's OK there. Otherwise, nothing else will work in the series. You won't be able to compile programs. But assuming that's worked, then we can move on to looking at writing some C code. To write code in C, we need an editor. And one of the best editors I've found for Windows, there are plenty of good editors already for Linux and a good few free ones for the Mac as well. For Windows, there's only really one that I've found that excels. And that's Notepad++. If you go to the website notepad-plus-plus.org, It'll, on the left hand side, there's a link to download. If you click on that, you can download the Notepad++ installer. So download that and double click on it to install it when it's downloaded to install Notepad. And one more tiny thing before we start programming, just of note, is if you go to the website c++.com, as written here, it's an excellent reference site whilst you're programming. It's called C++, referring to the C++ language, but it also, if you click on reference, has here a reference to what's called the C library. And we'll be using this quite a lot in the future. Library files, well, a library is essentially a file, in this case, in C, a .h file. And it simply is exactly what it is. It's, it, it's, it's a library of functions. So it's um, a set of standard functions which are reused and reused in all sorts of C programs that it makes very little sense because they use so often to have to reprogram them and define them in your own program. And a good example here is math.h. And I click on math.h to have a look what ins is inside it. We've got functions like cosine, sine, tan, exponential, power, square root. These are all functions that are used many, many times, and it makes little sense to have to reprogram them yourselves every time. So you can simply include the math.h in your program, and then you can use these functions. And in this video, we'll actually be using something called the stdio.h. We'll be including this library file because I want to use something called the printf function, which is simply a function which prints text, in our case, to the console window, which is what we'll be doing for our first program. So just bear that in mind. I find this site one of the best references or easiest references to use when programming in C and usually always have it open because it's easy to forget how to use some of the library functions or particularly some of the nuances. OK, so once that's downloaded, Notepad's downloaded, have a quick look at the reference. We know we need library files. Now we're going to start programming. So open, ad, open up Notepad++. Oh, one quick thing before we start with Notepad be a good idea to make a directory actually in your C drive. Um, I'm going to make one here called Tutorial. Simply as a simple place directly under the C so we don't need to type too long a path in the console to hold the code you're going to use in these tutorials. And I'm going to go into this directory and then as before right click, copy this address as text. I'm going to open up the command window that was open here. I'm going to type cd space and on the window at the top right click, edit and paste the address I've just copied. So I've got cd space c colon slash tutorial and hit enter and now my current directory has changed to c tutorial. If I type dir to see what's in the directory, I can see that there are no files in the directory at the moment. 
So back to Notepad. The first thing we need to type is include or hash include, sorry, two speech marks and inside the speech marks stdio.h. And all we're doing here is including that library file that we had a look at on c++.com because we want to use this printf function. Now I'm going to type a couple of lines of code and I'll describe them once they've been typed and saved. So I'm going to type int int space main open and close brackets open a squiggly bracket enter a couple of times to make a couple of empty lines close the squiggly brackets and then hit enter a couple more times inside the squiggly brackets and simply type return zero and a semicolon. I'm then going to save this file in this tutorial directory I made on the C drive and call it ch1.c. It's important to call it .c. And now the color of all the text changes because Notepad has recognized, or Notepad++ has recognized that it's a C file and has color coded various things accordingly, which makes it a lot easier later on with complicated to programs to see what's going on in the code. So let's have a little bit of an explanation about exactly what this is. First of all, the compiler runs from top to bottom through the file and interprets all of the things you type. So on this first line here, it understands this to say hash include means we'll include the file described inside the speech marks, which is this library file, because we want to use in a bit this printf function. Line two, it does nothing because white space empty lines are ignored in C. On the next line, we've got something called a function definition, defining a, what's called a main function. Now, functions and their definitions will be covered in a later video, but all you need to do know is that in every program, this int space main open close brackets, this can be, simply be seen as the entry door into the program. So the program starts here, and the compiler knows that the main function is where a program starts. It's always called int space main open close brackets. You can have stuff inside the brackets, but again, that will be covered later on. We don't need it for now. These curly braces here are what's known as a code block. And this code block belongs to the main function. So the compiler enters the main function and will read line by line all of the instructions inside this code block, which belongs to the main function. So on line four, it will read nothing. On line five, now it finds an instruction. The instruction is to return, so to leave this function, and return the value of zero. And re you return zero from main, it's saying that the program executed correctly. And a semicolon means end of instruction. So what the compiler is seeing here, again, from top to bottom, is include a library file. Don't do anything, there's no instruction. Aha, here's the entry point for the program. I'll now start processing the commands from here. Line four, there's nothing to process. Line five, Aha, there's an instruction to leave the program saying all was okay, end of that instruction. So you can probably guess this program does absolutely nothing. It simply starts and then stops, having not done very much. So what we'll do is make it do something. We'll use this printf function, typing at printf, open and close bracket, and then a couple of speech marks inside the brackets. And we'll type while wow, it has worked, exclamation mark, and a semicolon to say this is the end of this instruction. Uh, again, I'll explain functions in more detail later, but simply printf simply prints to the black console whatever is inside these speech marks. In this case, it should be while wow, it has worked with an exclamation mark. So the program now enters at main, does nothing on line four, finds this function which it knows about because it was included from the library file and understands it has to print whatever's in these speech marks to the screen. Line six does nothing and line seven exits. So we'll save our file and now we need to turn this code into an executable to actually print this line to the screen. And it's very easy to do that. If you go back to the console, I simply need to call our GCC, type GCC again, space ch1.c so take our ch1.c, so our code file, which is in our directory, space, minus sign, small o, because now we're saying, after we know what code files we need, our output file, space, should be called ch1, and enter. And then maybe a slight pause, 
in this gap here there would be any warnings or errors from the compiler but there weren't any because it's a very small and very easy program and there shouldn't be any errors and now if I type dir you see that in the directory we have two files one is the saved code file that we've written in notepad and now we've got a ch1.exe if I look in the folder you can see here also there's the ch1.exe so now we have compiled our first C program into an executable and to run it we simply type the name ch1 and that runs the .exe and we have wow it has worked printed to the console and that's it that's the first C program written and running and working without any errors it's a very simple program but it's a working C program nonetheless and that's it for this video in the next video I'm going to do little errors and mistakes in the code that we've just written so you can see a little bit what the compiler says when it tries to tell you where the errors are and why and how you then deal with them and then in the further tutorials the next few videos I'll start covering the very basics of C so variables loops and then functions and then what we'll start doing is actually developing a working chess engine or chess program with C alongside the tutorial so that it becomes a bit more interesting to learn about C whilst programming an interesting program and I've written a chess engine before and I find it a very worthwhile exercise for learning and also a really rewarding exercise for something to program as well. So thanks for listening, paying attention, I hope it made at least a little bit of sense and comments and questions are welcome on YouTube. Till next time, thanks very much.